there is a WordPress.org and a WordPress.com. Both of them are used to create websites and blogs, and they're made by the same people, but they're not the same thing. And although this course is specifically for WordPress.org to show you how to use WordPress.org, I'm going to briefly explain the difference between WordPress.org and WordPress.com. And some of the main differences are the domain name, hosting, flexibility, restrictions, ease of use, and total costs. So we're going to go over these main differences and then in the end talk about which one is better overall. The first difference we're going to go over is the domain name. With WordPress.org, you have to get your own domain name, but it's going to be a completely custom domain name. So for this site, for instance, it's BillWithoutCode.com. With WordPress.com, you don't have to get your own domain name from someone else if you don't want to. So you can just use this one for free, but it's not custom. BuildWithoutCode.wordpress.com. If you want a custom domain name with WordPress.com, you have to get it through WordPress, and it costs about $18 to $25 per year. With WordPress.org, you get your domain name from someone other than WordPress, and it'll cost you about $10 per year. So that's the main difference between WordPress.org and WordPress.com as far as the domain name goes. With WordPress.org, just like you have to get your own domain name, you also have to get your own web hosting to store all the content on your site. And web hosting plans cost about $8 per month. And with, with those plans, you can store almost anything you want, any type of content, and you have almost unlimited storage. With WordPress.com, on the initial plan you sign up for, it is completely free, so they'll host your blog for free, but there's a couple reasons why it's free. You only get three gigs of space, so if you are a photographer, for instance, and you have very high quality images, you will probably run out of space. You cannot store videos through the basic plan. And they are allowed to show ads on your site and collect the revenue since they're hosting your content for free. So if you want to upgrade and get rid of ads, get more space, show video, you have to upgrade to the premium plan, which costs about $99 per year, which is about the same price you would pay for your own hosting through WordPress.org. In fact, the premium one would actually be a little bit more expensive probably. So if you were going to buy the premium plan, you may as well use WordPress.org because it's going to be slightly cheaper and it has a lot of other benefits like flexibility, which we will be going over. WordPress.org is a lot more flexible than WordPress.com. If we sign into the dashboard of our WordPress.org site, you'll see something called plugins. Plugins are kind of like what apps are for your iPhone. So if there's something that we can't do on our iPhone, we can download an app to help us do that. It increases the functionality of the iPhone. Let's say we want to edit photos, we can download this photo editor app on, our, on the iPhone and then we'll be able to edit photos. Plugins increase the functionality of our website. So when I wanted to have an email capture form like this one, I simply downloaded a plugin called MailChimp for WordPress Lite, which allows me to add an email capture form and that integrates with my MailChimp account. Another reason why WordPress.org is so much more flexible than WordPress.com has to do with something called themes. Themes determine in large part the look and feel of your site. And WordPress.org has way more themes to choose from than WordPress.com. And in addition to that, you can customize your themes a lot more with WordPress.org than you can with WordPress.com. So WordPress.org is a whole lot more flexible than WordPress.com. As far as restrictions go, WordPress.org has pretty much no restrictions. 
it's an open source software, which means you can use it however you want, commercial use, personal use, whatever it may be, free to use. And so WordPress doesn't make any money off of WordPress.org. They make their money from WordPress.com. And to try to get you to upgrade to their premium and business plans, there are a couple restrictions in place for their free plan. So we've already talked about things like the uh, non-custom domain name or only a little bit of storage space, can't put videos. But there's some other restrictions such as e-commerce sites. So if you want to have an online store and sell stuff through your website, you can't do that with the basic plan or even the premium plan. You have to upgrade all the way to the business plan. And for something like affiliate marketing, and affiliate marketing is when you advertise a product on your site or review a certain product and then have a link to go buy that product in which you get a cut, there's a lot of restrictions around doing that on a basic plan. So e-commerce, affiliate marketing, along with the other things that we've talked about are some of the main restrictions that uh, surround WordPress.com and they don't exist on WordPress.org. When considering ease of use, I think there's two main factors to consider. Number one, how easy is it to get your site live on the internet to get set up essentially? And two, after your site is live on the internet, how easy is it to customize and edit? So as far as just getting started, WordPress.com is a little bit easier and faster because you don't have to register a domain name and you don't have to set up hosting. With WordPress.org, you do have to do those things, so it's going to take a little bit longer. And if you don't know how to register a domain name or set up hosting, then it's going to be more complicated. However, you're obviously taking this class, and in this class I've already shown you how to register a domain name and set up hosting, so it's not really going to be any more complicated, but it will take a little bit longer to get set up with WordPress.org. The other factor to consider is how easy is it to customize your site and add content. And as far as that goes, WordPress.org, in my opinion, is much easier to use because it's so much more flexible as we've gone over. Uh, when you're editing the appearance, there's more themes to choose from. It's easier to customize those themes. And then the plugins is a huge thing. If there's something you can't do on WordPress.com, tough luck. If there's something you can't do natively on WordPress.org, you can probably find a plugin that will allow you to do that thing. So using WordPress.com would be like having an iPhone where you could, couldn't could download any apps. You could only use the apps that already existed on your iPhone. With WordPress.org, if there's something you can't do, you download a plugin and usually you'll find something to help you uh, have that increased functionality. So as far as ease of use goes, getting started is going to be quicker with WordPress.com, but actually customizing your site, in my opinion, is much easier with WordPress.org. The total cost of a WordPress.org site is about $10 a month for your domain name and hosting. Now this is considering the plans that I showed you earlier when I showed you how to set up hosting which is you know unlimited space and unlimited domain names for that hosting plan. For WordPress.com you could technically have a site for free but there's a lot of limitations and if you were to upgrade so you could have a little more storage or a custom domain name it'll be about $99 per year and then business plan uh, about $300 per, per year. So uh, WordPress.com could be cheaper if you never upgraded anything, but uh, for any of these, it's going to be about the same price, if not more, than uh, paying for the domain name and hosting yourself on WordPress.org. I think WordPress.org is far superior to WordPress.com. Pretty much the only reason why I would use WordPress.com is if I wanted to make a small personal blog that only my friends and family were going to read. And even then, I may still want to use WordPress.org 
because then I could really uh, develop a skill in building websites and it's just so much more flexible I can make it look however I want uh, I can put any functionality I want into it so even then I would st I still might use wordpress.org but uh, you know small personal blog maybe I'd use word wordpress.com anything beyond that I would definitely use wordpress.org uh, for any commercial reasons you know if I want to sell stuff I can't do that on the basic plan uh, affiliate marketing I can't do I can't monetize my blog through affiliate marketing on the basic plan uh, I can't have my own uh, custom domain name which is I mean huge if it was a business I would want my own custom domain name I wouldn't want them putting ads on my site if it was say my personal portfolio I wouldn't really want to be having ads on there so uh, for the most part I would always use wordpress.org with the basic plan, there's so many restrictions and so much lack of flexibility that a lot of the time you're going to have to end up upgrading to the premium or business plan anyway to do what you want. And if you're going to spend any money, you may as well be getting your own hosting and your own domain name through WordPress.org because as, as we've gone over, it's just so much more flexible. You can do so much more with it. It'll be so much easier to make your site look and do uh what you want it to do and what you want it to look like so pretty much for the most part um, you can tell I'm pretty biased I think uh, wordpress.org is a lot better